There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. Your shield and buckler. Wives of Ministers I saw the wives of the ministers. Some of them are no help to their husbands, yet they profess the third angel's message. They think more of studying their own wishes and pleasure than the will of God, or how they can hold up the hands of their husbands by their faithful prayers and careful walk. I saw that some of them take so willful and selfish a course that Satan makes them his instruments and works through them to destroy the influence and usefulness of their husbands. They feel at liberty to complain and murmur if they are brought through any straight places. They forget the sufferings of the ancient Christians for the truth's sake and think that they must have their wishes and way and follow their own will. They forget the suffering of Jesus, their master. They forget the man of sorrows who was acquainted with grief. He who had not way to lay his head. They do not care to remember that holy brow pierced with the crown of thorns. They forget him who bearing his own cross to Calvary fainted beneath its burden. Not merely the burden of the wooden cross but the heavy burden of the sins of the world was upon him. They forget the cruel nails driven through his tender hands and feet and his expiring agonizing cries. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? After all this suffering endured for them, they feel a strong unwillingness to suffer for Christ's sake. These persons I saw are deceiving themselves. They have no part nor lot in the matter. They have hold of the truth, but the truth has not hold of them. When the truth, the solemn important truth gets hold of them, self will die. Then the language will not be, I will go there. I will not stay here. But the earnest inquiry will be, where does God want me to be? Where can I best glorify Him? And where can our united labors do the most good? Their will should be swallowed up in the will of God. The willfulness and lack of consecration that some of the minister's wives manifest will stand in the way of sinners. The blood of souls will be upon their garments. Some of the ministers have borne a strong testimony in regard to the duty and the wrongs of the church. But it had not had its design effect for their own companions needed all the straight testimony that had been borne, and the reproof came back upon themselves with great weight. They let their companions affect them and drag them down, prejudicing their minds and the usefulness and influence are lost. They feel desponding and disheartened and realize not the true source of the injury. It is close at home. These sisters are closely connected with the work of God. If he has called their husbands to preach the present truth, these servants, if truly called of God, will feel the importance of the truth. They are standing between the living and the dead and must watch for souls as they must give an account. Solemn is their calling and their companions can be a great blessing or a great curse to them. They can cheer them when desponding, comfort them when cast down, and encourage them to look up and trust fully in God when their faith fails. Or they can take an opposite course, look upon the dark side, think they have had a hard time, exercise no faith in God, talk their trials and unbelief to their companions, indulge a complaining, murmuring spirit and be a dead weight and even a curse to them. I saw that the minister's wives should help their husbands in their labors and be exact and careful what influence they exert, for they are washed and more is expected of them than of others. Their dress should be an example, their lives and conversation should be an example, severing of life rather than of death. I saw that they should take a humble, meek, yet exalted stand, not having their conversation upon things that do not tend to direct the mind heavenward. The great inquiry should be, how can I save my own soul and be the means of saving others? I saw that no half-hearted work in this matter is accepted of God. He wants the whole heart and interest, or he will have none. Their influence tells decidedly, unmistakably in favor of the truth or against it. They gather with Jesus or scatter abroad. An unsanctified wife is the greatest curse that a minister can have. Those servants of God that have been and are still so unhappily situated as to have this withering influence at home should double their prayers and their watchfulness. Take a firm decided stand and let not this darkness press them down. They should cleave closer to God be firm and decided, rule well their own house and live so that they can have the approbation of God and the watch care of the angels. But if they yield to the wishes of their unconsecrated companions, the frown of God is brought upon the dwelling. The ark of God cannot abide in the house because they countenance and behold them in their wrongs. Our God is a jealous God. It is a fearful thing to trifle with him. Anciently, Achan 
coveted a golden wedge and a Babylonish garment and secreted them, and all Israel suffered, and they were driven before their enemies. And when Joshua inquired the cause, the Lord said, Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Achan had sinned, and God destroyed him and all his household, with all they possessed, and wiped the curse from Israel. I saw that the Israel of God must arise and renew their strength in God by renewing and keeping their covenant with Him. Covetousness, selfishness, love of money and love of the world are all to the ranks of Sabbath keepers. These evils are destroying the spirit of sacrifice among God's people. Those that have this covetousness in their hearts are not aware of it. It is gained upon them imperceptibly and unless it is rooted out, their destruction will be as sure as was Achan's. Many have taken the sacrifice from God's altar. They love the world, love its gain and increase, and unless there is an entire change in them, they will perish with the world. God has lent them means. It is not their own, but God has made them His stewards. And because of this, they call it their own and hold it up. But oh, how quick, when the prospering hand of God is removed from them, it is all snatched away in a moment. They must be a sacrificing for God, a denying of self for the truth's sake. Oh, how weak and frail is man! How puny his arm! I saw that soon the loftiness of man is to be brought down, and the pride of man humbled. Kings and nobles, rich and poor, alike shall bow, and the withering plagues of God shall fall upon them. Your Sheila Buckler.